Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today, we're discussing a living legend of a watch made from 2000 to 2006. This is the Patek Philippe 5110 G in white gold. This is the 5110G001 in white gold at 37 millimeters in diameter, 9.7 millimeters thick, 46.3 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. The timepiece marked Patek Philippe's first series production world time watch since the historic 2523. And this watch is considered to be one of the finest looking Patek Philippe watches of the Stern ownership era, which dates back to 1932. So, what do we get? Well, we get a watch that features white gold, and this is traditional white gold. As you can see, it is blindingly bright. This is the traditional rhodium-plated white gold, which is why the watch, the white gold, looks like it's made of platinum. The timepiece wears easily on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, and as you can see, being short across the wrist with a span of only 46.3 millimeters, I can recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 centimeters circumference, so while subsequent world time watches grew quite a bit. This one is wearable on both male and female wrists, and you can see with a domed bezel, it slides easily underneath a dress cuff. Taking a quick look at the hardware and the software, you can see that the strap is a Patek Philippe factory strap in outstanding condition, and that we have a matching white gold Patek Philippe deployant clasp. It features a little Calatrava cross logo on the buckle, snaps shut for security, and you can see that these Pull tab spring bars mark the strap as a relatively recent addition to this watch, which features a number of heritage design elements I'll mention in a moment. But nothing betrays the age of a world time watch more than the choice of cities and time zones on the dial. As you can see, back when this model was made, Caracas, Venezuela still occupied a prominent position between New York and Rio. The watch uses a system co-developed by Patek Philippe and watchmaker Louis Cotier. So what you do here is you set your city of reference at the top. So let's say I'm in LA, but I'm not really in LA. I'm gonna make this simple adjust to 245. I am in Philadelphia, so I'm going to adjust New York as my reference city. The watch does all the math for you. Let's say I want to fly to South Georgia. I can easily do so just by setting my city of reference up at 12 o'clock using the pusher, and everything adjusts. The Cotier system for displaying world time was developed in the 1930s and first employed by Patek and Vacheron at the time. It's very simple. You just read the minute at center, and then you read the hour adjacent to the city of reference. So, for example, I can see that it is 11 p.m. in London. I can see that it is 5 a.m. in Dhaka. I can see that it is 11 a.m. in Auckland. All of that because I read the hour adjacent to the city. I also have semicircles, one of them silver, one of them blue. Blue approximates the area where it is currently night, and silver approximates the area where it is currently day. If you look carefully, you can see that the scale on the blue side has been printed in white, and the scale on the silver side has been printed in blue. The watch features a spectacular ricochet-style rose lathe guilloche on the center, lovely polished white gold spade style hands for the hours and minutes, and then little applied white gold applique indices. Very, very, very handsome. Now, if I want to make changes without using the primary adjustment mechanism, I can do so by employing the crown, and you can see how the world time system moves counterclockwise while the time at center moves clockwise. That's how the system operates. We're turning it all over, you can see it's powered by caliber 240. This is the caliber 240 HU for Heure Universelle. It is a very traditional micro rotor automatic with a 48-hour power reserve, a beat rate of 6 beats per second, 5-position adjustment, a gyromax style free-sprung balance, and you can see this is one of the old Geneva Hallmark movements. So this being a rhodium-plated white gold Patek with the Geneva Hallmark, you can sort of approximate when it was made. Patek went to conventional gray gold 
from traditional white gold in 2006, and Patek phased out the Geneva Hallmark in mid-2009. Of course, the model made between 2000 and 2006, none of them would feature the Patek Philippe seal, but still fun to see the old Poisson de Genève on the reverse side. All of this is 30 meters water resistant, pivots on 33 joules, and you can see that it is nicely hand finished with mirrored englage stripes, of Cote de Genève across the bridges, perfectly aligned. Uh, little polished pegs that are used to locate the bridges on the base plate. You can see that particularly on the balance cock. You can see satination on the wheels. Uh, you can see there's engine turning on the base plate, black polished screws with chamfered slots and circumference. And then we have this, these lovely mirrored bevels. You can actually see here that at the time, Patek would start those bevels mechanically, and you can see some of the bites of the milling wheel at this angle, and then it would finish them by hand after the initial milling. And that's something that's more evident on older Patek movements than on the more recent one, a sign of just how the standards for case backs and display backs have evolved upwardly since that time. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this Patek Philippe 5110G World Time.